Hi, in this video we'll be using a spring mass system simulation from PHGT to understand a concept called simple harmonic motion. As a matter of fact, this worksheet that I designed is self-explanatory. So you can go through the instructions, follow uh, what I asked you to do, and you'll be able to collect the data and answer all the questions. So if you'd like to explore it yourself, please pause the video now and try it yourself. In case you want to find more hints, then you can surely continue the video at any time that you like and pause again when you feel confident again. 2000 years later. Okay, so let me show you how I would do it. Let's start with introduction. So we have to go to the website, which is the simulation itself. Uh, go for the last tab, which is called lab. And then you can see the same screen here. The next thing that you want to do is to set the damping, which is the friction, to be none. And this is a requirement if you want to study simple harmonic motion, because when we talk about simple harmonic motion, uh, it, it just go forever. The amplitude always maintain the same when there's no friction. If you somehow are uh, set by default, then you will have some friction. So for example, like this one, eventually it will stop. And this is another kind of motion uh, that you may get to learn in the future. Okay, so let's go and um, set this as zero. And then the next thing is uh, you are free to enable. I'll, I'll just do all of them. Okay, just to show and allow us to discuss more later on. Um, we have to understand that there are in a total of four quantities. So I'm pretty sure that you know already mass, gravity, spring constant, and amplitude. And we'll do it one by one. And uh, we have to use a tool. We can drag it out when you need it uh, to do the measurement itself. And then uh, we will also do 10 periods and then divide by 10 to obtain a more precise value of the period. Okay. Uh, because of the time, I'm not going to do repeated trial, but if you did that, I'll appreciate, of course. Okay, so let's start with experiment one, which is the mass. So uh, I guess we'll just go with whatever setting that we are having. So for gravitational acceleration, I'll just put it down as 9.8 meter per second square. And then for spring constant, um, if you somehow read experiment three, then you know this is arbitrary unit. In fact, I don't know whether this is a linear scale or not, but then I will assume it is. So if small is one, then this is two, three, four. Okay, then this is four uh, arbitrary unit. And then for the amplitude, uh, we can set it up later. So for the mass, uh, this is in gram. So starting from 50, so we can do 50, that means um, 0 0.050. Yeah, and then uh, we will do 100, so 0 0.1, 0 0.15 maybe, 0 0.20, 0, 0, and so on. Oh, we need one more. All right, never mind. I will just add one more. Okay, so uh, one seven five gram, and in this case, I can get seven different independent variable. So let's start with fifty gram first. And so uh, what I'll have to do is probably I want to pause it first, and I already put the mass on, and I need to get a ruler. So if you try to look at the so called, you know, the so called mass equilibrium is somewhat in the middle. But then I don't like it because it's very hard for you to observe the amplitude. So I will pick a point which is easy to find, uh, which I will choose the upper surface, like this line, on the mass. So I will set it as zero on my ruler, just align them, and then I can go for, say, uh, 20. Okay, I'll just pick 20 to be like, I mean, this, this, this looks like a a nice number to start with. So back here, then I will start with uh, 20 cm as the amplitude, because if you try to have seen it before, then you know this is the amplitude that you will have. Okay, and then we got a timer, and then we can start 
the button okay but then it didn't start because i haven't started the motion so let's just go okay we'll go for 10 cycle so one two three four five six seven eight nine okay ten oh i'm a bit slower but i guess i guess that's that's i'll, I'll just take it okay so 0 0.5 wow that's actually very very quick so um we have we have to divide it by 10 and so that means it will be 0 0.578 so 0 0.578 second okay okay so now i have to reset the timer and i can press the start again because i paused the motion already and then uh, back to 20 the next mass that i will get will be 100 okay 100 and in fact actually i i should what i should do is i should reset it first okay reset this and then i have to start because because it the equilibrium will be changed so uh, you can't just use the setting of the previous trial so i will go with 20 again oh i forgot to pause it okay never mind so i will pause it 20 okay and then i will go again one two three four five six seven eight nine okay i'll do a slow motion and ten okay so this is 0 0.8 uh point one two. okay this i think this this time is much easier to count so that means divide by 10 that will be 0 0.812 okay i'll record it down okay so uh i will just do the rest and i'll skip you know the recording of this part i'm pretty sure that you can do the rest of them a few moments later all right maybe i would like to show you the last trial which is 300 gram so uh, i just find out the ruler can't go all the way through because this is too heavy so one thing that i can do is uh, i will start with 10 instead and i'll pull it to 30 so the displacement is still 20. Uh, let's just reset this and go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay wait i forgot to start the timer all right never mind i did it already so it's 14.07 uh, so that means my input should be 1.407 second okay so now we have got all the data for experiment one so let's just try to put it into the excel and see how it looks like on the graph all right, so here we go. Um, if I try to add the trend line, then I guess you may be guessing it's linear. I think I think it's legit. I mean, if you guess linear, but then uh, in my mind, actually, I know it's not linear. So uh, what I would suggest, however, is that uh, I will take the log function. So in case you don't know what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to linearize it. So um, there was a video that I made earlier about linearization using the log function so if you miss it out you can go and click the button and go and check out that video so what i'll need to do now is to work out the number for uh, log mass and log period t so i can simply just uh, use the excel to help me to calculate the log value of each of these and plug them into a graph Okay, so here we go and if you try to add a linear line which I think this is a very nice linear line and if I try to display the equation you can see that uh, this is what we get we will have y which is the log m I, be I believe is it no 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 uh, y is actually log t so Maybe I can just change here. Log t is y. If you look at the value, then you know. Uh, log m will be here. And that's the equation that we get uh, from the first experiment. Okay, so I copy my graph back to the worksheet. Uh, the y-axis is log t and x-axis is log m.
okay just so you know and so if you try to look at the equation interestingly this value is very close to 0 0.5 so apparently there's a meaning all right carry out from the physics so if we try to look at this then uh, we can deduce from the equation log t equals to 0 0.5 log m plus a constant k let's just say and then uh, you can deduce this as in because the index can be put like this can be put as the index so that will become m to the power of 0 0.5 plus k you can do log because this is the same as log e right I mean this is 1 so uh, what you can do is e to the power of k and then keep it like this and then you can merge the two natural log together to get m 0 0.5 or simply we can get root square root m and then e k and in fact e to the power of k is still another constant so let's just call this as k1 then this is k2 simply okay and so eventually you can cancel out the natural law on both sides then you can get t equals to root m times k2 so that is to say because of this equation you can then deduce a relationship between t proportional to root and because this again k2 is a constant so this is what you can find out from experiment one all right let's start the experiment two about gravitational acceleration so first of all we have to decide our control variable again so i've resected the experiment so i would like to set up all these things again uh, for the mass i'll just go with the default so 100 gram spring constant again the default will be four arbitrary unit uh, amplitude i'll just choose 20 cm for convenience. So uh, for graph gravity, we have from 0 to thir 30. So let's just do 5, 10. Okay, wait, wait, stop, stop. So annoying. 15, 20, and 25, and 30. Okay. And then I guess the rest will be similar to what we did earlier. Okay, so take out the ruler, take out the timer, uh, set the gravity to be exactly 5 and you want to make sure it is stop and then start the timer and set up the ruler align together 20 cm as amplitude i think we're all good to go yeah okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay 0813 so that means i have to input 0 0.813 all right after dividing 10. so let me just do the rest and i'll show you my result a few moments later all right you may find the time is basically the same so i'll just do the last trial with you uh to just demonstrate to you that's very normal so i will i have already set 30 reset the timer and then start from 10 drag to 30 so the amplitude is still 20 and then we do counting yeah all good 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay 10 okay so well that's exactly the same so I'll put down 0 0.811 okay and that's all I mean if you want to move on to do part 3 then go ahead and plot it out alright so this is what you get if you really try to plot it and uh, you may find it kind of scattered that, but then if you look at the y-axis then you know the reason why because it's kind of narrow into that tiny bit of area so if you try to zoom out looking at the actual scale then they are basically the same straight line so uh, I don't bother to change it I'll just you know roughly sketch here then you should get I mean sorry for my drawing but then it's basically uh, what we have okay so G and also well actually it should be 
t here and g here because this is independent variable. Okay, so anyway, the find out finding is that we will we will know that um, period t is in fact independent of gravitational acceleration. Okay, so that means if you no matter which planet you go with the same mass, same spring constant, and also well same amplitude here, then the period is always the same. Fun fact: think about in the outer space, the astronaut cannot rely on the traditional electronic balance to measure their own mass. So, the other alternative that people invented is just simply by the result that we find out that the period of oscillation is independent of the gravity so no matter where you are even if it is zero then the period is still the same so that is why there are some machine that is literally a spring i mean more sophisticated and more sturdy but then you can see the guy just you know get on top of it and just let it move okay so then by measuring the period of each cycle then we can estimate the mass of the object or the astronaut itself let's go with experiment three spring constant and so let's reset all of them no friction and um, this time we'll get to use again i'll stick with the default 100 gram and default as 9.8 uh, meter per second square for acceleration amplitude i'll also pick 20 cm okay and for the spring constant, I've already chosen for you from 1 to 10, and then we'll do it one by one. So once again, stop the motion, and then we will get to take out the ruler, take out the timer, also stop the motion, start the timer, drag it to 20 cm, and then we are good to go. Yeah? Okay? 1, 2, 3 four five six seven eight nine ten okay so eleven point so that's one point one four nine okay one point one four nine okay so again I think the rest of them uh, I mean at least from the middle well, these things I will skip it and I will show you my result later on all right, so I got all the data set except for the last one. And as usual, I will demonstrate it to you. So um, I've changed it to this and then reset this, stop this, and then match the ruler again, 20, and then we should be good to go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Okay, 0 0.575, 0 0.575, okay, and then we'll be copying this to Excel and plot the graph. Alright, so this is probably what you will get also. Uh, obviously, you don't you don't call this a, a straight line for sure. There's no way it will be a straight line. So, uh, you can either do exponential or log, but anyway, I, I think what I'll do, like the previous one, I will do the log function so log k because spring constant is k and also log t and then similarly I will take the log function for each cell okay and then I will plot this again okay so this is what I get and this should be wow not really good yeah, not not really good. Um, one thing though, is that we don't we are not sure that whether or not the spring constant is really in such a regular interval because the simulation yes show us like the scale, but then this is just a visual scale. But then who knows? Maybe the interval between the small to large is not really regular. Uh, but then if we are trying to do this, then name it as 1 to 10 then we are making such an assumption that is a regular interval so that may not be true 
but then I'll just go with it first, right? I'll, I'll go with such an assumption. So for the equation, then that would be this one, which yeah, I think I think is not is not good. It's not good because I of course I know the actual result, and this doesn't look good at all. Okay, so yeah, I think I would I would, I would still write it down as this as the log t I believe, and this is log k. And then I will copy this to my worksheet. All right, so here we go. We have got a uh, log t and then log k to be y and x axis. So from this, to be honest, I don't think you can derive it properly. But then assuming this equation is really what we get, then the only thing that we can talk about is uh, like how we did earlier, we can say log t equals to log k to the power of negative 0 0.3 roughly but then actually I know it's not 0 0.3 it should be 0 0.5 uh, okay let, let's just take it as 0 0.5 okay <laughs> because I, 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 I know the theory itself, the framework itself and then uh, with this uh, like the same technique eventually you'll find out uh, there's another constant so this is really k3 as a constant. This k is the spring constant k. So eventually, uh, what you get is going to be t equals to k3, which is a constant, um, divide by root k, which is a spring constant. And that is to say t is proportional to 1 over root k. So ideally, this is what we could get. Um, but then I think that's something to do with the simulation setting itself, the design of how exactly the spring constant, the interval itself was set. I don't know why they don't give us an actual number. I don't know. Maybe they want to simplify it. But then, yeah, that, that will affect our measurement in this case. Anyway, let's go for experiment 4, the last one, uh, amplitude. So I've resected the simulation, so I will set it up again. And so this time I will pick, as usual, the mass to be 100 gram. Uh, G will be 9.8 meter per second square. Spring constant will be 4 with the arbitrary unit. So I would need to do 10 cm to 50 cm one by one. So I will. I guess I'll just demonstrate to you as well. So rule out, timer out. Okay, and then drag it to 10. Okay, and then we will just start. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, back to 10 cm. So 0 0.8, 0 0.11, so that means uh, 0 0.811. Okay, so um, again, uh, I'll skip this and I'll show you my data later on. Okay, so similar to the gravity, uh, you will find the period is again, uh, doesn't really change no matter what amplitude that you set. So in fact, as a control variable, it was kind of not really essential because if you go back and think about when we try to do test number one and test number three it doesn't really matter a lot uh, whatever gravity or amplitude that we set but never mind i mean we we just try to add cautiously so back here if we want to express it with a graph then i guess again if you can if you want you can plot it but eventually what you get will be a graph like that right just a horizontal line with uh, period t to be always constant with uh, no matter what kind of amplitude that you get so as for the relationship um, like so then we will say period t is independent of the amplitude okay all right so finally we come to our conclusion of our whole activity so let's say for this spring mass system, which is like the simulation itself when you try to hook the mass onto the spring, 
it's given by an equation. So this is given. Uh, it takes time for, for me to explain this. So let's just take this for granted first. Will be acceleration equal to negative omega square times x. x is the displacement. So omega will be the, like the angular velocity, which is 2 pi over t that you have by considering the other two law which is the Newton second law and Hooke's law try to derive the equation that is relevant and be able to explain your finding in experiment 1 to 4 so if you haven't tried this out uh, you may want to pause the video now and I will strongly encourage you to try it out first Okay, so here is how I would derive it. Don't worry, it looks quite complicated, but it's actually quite simple. So I'll show you one by one. So first of all, uh, we have to think about the equation Newton's second law can describe the motion, obviously. And we will think about the free body diagram of the mass itself. At any time t, you still have weight, and you also have a corresponding tension t which is governed by the Hooke's law in general, t equal to negative kx. x here, be careful, is being the total extension. Okay, while the x that we talk about here is, I mean at the end, is talking about the displacement from the equilibrium. So there is actually a difference when we talk about a vertical spring mass system like this. So this is the trickiest part of our um, derived work here. So think about this. Normally, when you have the spring, you only have a natural length of L, and when you hook the mass on top of it, which is causing you the um, equilibrium line back to the simulation. So I will call it as E, okay, so this E is just an extension caused by the mass itself without any pulling, okay, or any external factor. And at this point, it is steady, and also at the same time you can also think about in this case weight will equal to the t at this point let me just call it as t log so um, w equals to t log in this state and for t log in fact this is simply negative k e in this case all right and looking at the case more in general the one on the right then it's when you pull this and when the mass is, you know, going uh, through the oscillation motion, then you have a general displacement x and that will count into the extension. So the total extension will be E plus x. So that is why here, when I try to substitute the T, I will do negative K bracket E plus x. And so for the weight, uh, because again, just now we have find out an expression for weight which would equal to negative ke again this e is the like the first extension at the, at the first place so after you find it out you find out this and this will cancel out so it doesn't really matter what kind of mass that you hook up to the spring and causing at the different initial points so that's why the amplitude doesn't really matter a lot and so leaving you with negative kx at the end equal to ma if you rearrange it you can get the equation a equals to negative k over m times x the reason why we arrange this is because if you look at this and this one they look very similar and in this case when you just by comparing it you'll find out uh, the omega square would equal to k over m okay which is this one over here and so if you again recall omega is the angular velocity which is 2 pi over t t is the period then you can find out the new expression finally as period equal to 2 pi times square roots of m over k okay and this is a final equation we want to derive and this can help you to explain all the experiment result and so for experiment one uh, we were simply looking at the equation so t and also root m here 
then they are in proportion okay uh, as for experiment 2 and 4 actually because simply you cannot see the quantity G and A from the equation and so obviously they are independent of T so it doesn't matter what G what kind of A amplitude that you get it won't affect the period you get in this motion and for uh, experiment 3 which is kind of a fail right because of the limitation of this uh, simulation but then as I said ideally it should be 1 over root k so uh, from this equation this is the reason why I knew it should be 1 over uh, root k I think the one that we did is a bit off mm, but then I, I guess the overall trend is still acceptable okay at, at least it's an inverse function so this is it all right that's all uh, you can tell and these are the different factors that we try to investigate and eventually find out only the M and K are being the dependent one. I hope you enjoy learning physics with me and also this simulation. If you do so, please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.